The movie Oppenheimer opens with this quote. Prometheus stole fire from the gods and gave it to man. For this he was chained to a rock and tortured for eternity. The idea conveyed is that humans were given great power that they would not be able to handle responsibly and as a consequence the giver would suffer grave consequences. This quote finds a fitting application in J Robert Oppenheimer who granted human beings the power to completely annihilate themselves. Until then it was just a possibility but through the Manhattan project it became a stark reality. The movie demonstrates that suffering will be inevitable due to human beings capacity to wield such powers for their own ends. It illustrates two types of suffering, objective and subjective. The objective suffering is evident in the devastation caused to those on whom the bomb was deployed, resulting in tens and thousands of lives destroyed in minutes. However, the movie primarily focuses on the inevitable subjective suffering of Oppenheimer, resulting from his role in giving humanity this power. His torment comes from the government viewing him as a threat to its future ambitions, jealous colleagues, an affair, and ultimately his own conscience that he must grapple with due to the destruction his invention unleashed on the world. Initially, Oppenheimer is compelled to develop the bomb before the Germans can as they had highly efficient scientists working on the project. Later, after the bomb was deployed, Oppenheimer lobbies for nuclear power control due to its destructive potential. Nonetheless, despite his noble motivations, Oppenheimer cannot escape the suffering because like Prometheus, he gave the world the potential for its own destruction. Some might argue that Prometheus did not deserve his suffering because his intentions were good. But regardless of his intentions, he had to suffer the consequences of granting such powers to humanity. It is a reflection of the state of the world and the depravity of man rather than the black and white ideas of justice that should prevail. The movie spotlights Oppenheimer and Louis Strauss, who share certain similarities such as ambition, a strong vision, and a willingness to do whatever it takes to pursue their goals. However, where they differ is that while Strauss is primarily driven by ego and self-seeking ambitions, Oppenheimer is driven by greater causes. What makes Oppenheimer greater than the sum of his failures is that he strives for something he believes will help humanity and then fails at that, whereas Strauss aims at something lower, his own glory, and fails at that. Oppenheimer, despite committing numerous mistakes throughout his life, deeply regrets them and takes efforts to make amends. His wife recognizes that enduring the bias trial obviously stacked against him was an attempt by Oppenheimer to save himself by willingly subjecting himself to suffering. He does not hold grudges even against those who falsely testified against him. In contrast, Louis Strauss remains oblivious to his own corruption and justifies his conniving nature as an inevitable part of the political game. He is unwilling to introspect and is purely driven in a pursuit for glory that he believes was wrongly given to Oppenheimer but rightly belongs to him. The tragic state of Oppenheimer is not merely the story of a tormented genius. He is the inevitable hero who finds no place in this world. Regardless of his motivations and his willingness to make restitutions, he will be castigated. This highlights the fact that human beings will always exploit such geniuses for their own selfish ends. And once they have extracted as much as they can from them, they will abandon them to the pits of hell. As Albert Einstein aptly tells Oppenheimer, now it's your turn to deal with the consequences of your achievement.